Okay. Hi, welcome everyone to this edition of uh, the Captain Community Meeting. Uh, today is August 6th um, and we are not that far away from KubeCon 2020 this year, which will be a yeah, completely virtual experience for all of us. Um, and uh, we are pretty uh, excited that we also have a virtual Captain booth uh, at KubeCon 2020. So if you happen to be at the Captain or if you have to be at the uh, KubeCon, uh, make sure to also visit the Captain booth. Um, we are listed as a CNCF project, so I'm sure there are ways uh, to find us there. Uh, we have uh, like a short introduction video there. We have uh, resources there for you to download, and we have some. Uh, we also have uh, folks from the Captain community there, and like Captain Core developers. So we have a lot of folks that will uh, try to get all your questions answered, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you get all your questions answered uh, once you visit us there. Um, another highlight uh, or another update from my side, um, and uh, thanks also to Johannes for, for working uh, with me on this, uh, is uh, we now have like um, formalized guidelines for the Captain uh, community membership. So we already have, a, we had a guideline how to become a community rockstar. Uh, and we have also our community rockstar here uh, in, in, in our call today. But uh, now we have like a process how you can be part of the captain core uh, or the captain development team and what is the process of becoming from a member uh, to an approver to a maintainer, uh, which steps um, there are to take. Um, so if you are interested in joining us in making captain uh, better and just uh, participating in our product or, or project actually, um, then just uh, please take a look here on the Captain Community Membership and you will find everything uh, you need to know. Um, if you already did... I think we lost Jürgen. Yeah. Um, the Captain Community, so it's... Uh, And again, yes. And again, I think he wanted to tell us that there is also a captain mailing list. Um, then, uh, yeah. Oh, maybe I, I dropped out. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So, uh, pro because my internet again is a bit flaky today. So, probably best is if I already hand over. So, I, I was talking a little bit about the community guidelines here. Uh, but I think then, Johannes, thanks for, for um, jumping in. Um, so yeah, it's basically the, the start of the agenda here is uh, we, we covered the same parts as last week. Um, and I just want to hand over already to um, Johannes. Do you want to take the screen or should I give it already to Ermin? No, you can give it to Ermin. Mm -hmm. OK, then Ermin, please uh, go ahead. And uh, probably I come back later. But I will stop my video just to save some, some bandwidth. And I see we have a couple of folks also joining in our uh, chat. So if you have any questions, uh, either indicate them by raising the hand, or uh, actually I would prefer if you just start questioning in the Q&A section so everyone can see it and we can answer them. And I will take care of kind of monitoring the Q&A section so uh, all the presenters you don't have to worry about and I will ask the questions whenever they are, uh, they, they fit to the topic, so yeah. Handing Thank you very much, Jürgen. Uh, I have the honor to start presenting today since I haven't been with you the last three community meetings. Um, although the issues that I'm presenting today are just small um, enhancements in the bridge, uh, because mainly uh, the last weeks we focused on bug fixes and uh, code refactoring uh, after the uh, 0.7 release. Uh, the first issue that I'm presenting or the pull request is um, the, the issue in the bridge was that when you had to um, approve an artifact, so when you had an open approval um, for an artifact and you hadn't uh, deployed anything uh, on that stage yet. So um, when you open the environment screen, you got the information that the service was not yet deployed and uh, actually you had to um, expand this expandable here to see that there is an uh, open approval. And this was not very user-friendly, so we changed that 
um, in order to have a better user experience. And uh, we now, by default, expand all the services that have an open approval there. Uh, I have a SOC shop set up here with manual approval on the staging stage and on the production stage, where you can see when I click on the stage, that card service is expanded by default. Uh, before it was, yeah, collapsed and it was not really obvious that there is something that you can deploy, especially when there haven't uh, been, uh, when this service haven't been deployed yet on this stage. And the second issue that I'm presenting is uh, an issue with the chart that we had when you had a lot of uh, SLIs. So this legend here was growing and uh, because of that, the area of the chart was shrinked and we fixed that by adding a fixed height to this chart and limited the height of the legend to actually show only a maximum of three lines. And then you have here a scroll option. So I have another environment here where I have a lot of SLIs configured for my card service. And when I switch to the chart um, area, uh, you can see here I have only three lines of SLIs that can be of course uh, enabled in the chart. And for all others, I have to scroll through here. As you can also see the labels have a, a, a yeah, good readable height. So if that their date is displayed, you can read the whole date or in case that the label uh, build ID is provided, it will use that label. And actually, I think I have the wrong image deployed here right now, but we fixed that already to have here a fixed X, uh, uh, um, right. no, a fixed Y axis from zero to 100, because the result of this evaluation will always be between zero and 100 um, points, because yeah. Um, yeah, that's from my side. Do you have any questions or? Is that all fine? If there are no questions, I'm handing over to Florian. Thank you. Just share my screen. Okay, today I have one pull request that I wanted to show you, which is the shipyard controller. And that's a new service that will play a a big part in version 08 of Captain. And because this uh, will be introduced because we will use a slightly different approach of handling the triggering of uh, action executions that are done by Captain services. So now Captain services will execute their actions uh, after retrieving so-called triggered events. And the shipyard controller uh, is responsible for uh, keeping track of the current action executions that are going on. And then to do some synchronization and then trigger the next event in, in your workflow and so on. And the first part of uh, this new service was simply to uh, maintain a collection in a MongoDB where all the triggered events uh, for actions that are currently being executed or that should be executed next are maintained. So the way this works is the shipyard controller listens for all incoming events. And when an event with the, the test uh, suffix dot triggered in the event type, it will add this event to a collection containing all those triggered events. And what it will also do is will, it will make all the triggered events um, available via a public API that can be reached via the, the captain API. And this uh, is pretty cool because this will allow services that run outside of the captain cluster to use this API to check if there are some uh, actions that have been triggered 
that are relevant for them and that should be executed by them. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this pull request. And in the coming days, we will expand the service uh, in order to also react to uh, dot started events that indicate that uh, action has indeed been started uh, after having been triggered and finishing events and thus uh, use uh, this collection to, to synchronize the current state of, uh, of all the action executors that are performing the relevant actions. All right, are there any questions about that? If not. Maybe just a, a note on, on this issue. The last time we discussed the shipyard controller, what it does, uh, yeah, based on the new shipyard format. And um, this is now the first implementation or the first task uh, related to this shipyard controller. Yeah, which is pretty cool, thanks. So um, I have a question. So you, you said um, you can now yeah, reach this endpoint from, from outside. So it's not necessary to create captain services within captain. So I can, yeah, let's say, just just um, ask the API endpoint if there are any events. Exactly, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, very good question because uh, one goal of the shipyard controller is also that we split the control plane from the execution plane so that uh, services don't need to run next to captain. They can also live outside captain. Yeah. And, they, and in one of the next tasks, I uh, will also work on polling, polling uh, yeah, the events from, from captain. And then the service does its job, responds with a finished event, and then captain goes on. That's a great enhancement. Uh, I, I would also have a question, um, if, if you can hear me, because my internet is uh, uh, kind of flaking. But is there any way to kind of uh, then generate API tokens for different kind of services? Or they would uh, have, uh, like there is one token shared between all the services that are talking uh, to Captain? Right now it's one token. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, that's a good idea, a very good idea because then you can um, kind of, you, you have, a perm you can uh, define permissions for execution planes. Let's say this execution plane is just allowed to uh, execute this job. And that's, that's a good uh, idea. Exactly. Or if, uh, if one token gets compromised, you don't have to roll all the captain tokens. Uh, so you can just uh, re remove one uh, and you have a fine, fine control. But yeah, I think if it's not in the first version, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. If there are no further questions about this PR, I will hand over to Johannes. All right. Thanks. Then I'm just quickly showing what I have done this week. Uh, first of all, I worked on um, the CLI because we had some issues with uh, documentation in regard to uh, the commands and parameters. And what I did is I uh, streamlined all the, um, all the comments so that we have a um, streamlined way of, of documentation. And at the end, what I did is that I generated our documentation for the CLI and I updated it on Captain dot sh slash docs and when you go down to the reference section here in the cli section there you find all the comments the commands and then um, the, the descriptions and explanations of each command is now streamlined and it's telling you what the command is actually doing this was my First issue and the second one, this was um, about adapting the, the manifest that we use for developing uh, the services. And in, um, in each pro folder of each microservice of Captain, uh, there is a, a de um, deployment manifest and a service manifest. And we use this file to, 
to easily deploy this service on a Kubernetes cluster. It's not part of the installer, it's just used for dev purpose. And I had to update those so that we can um, uh, use it. The reason was that we are now, or we added it, the recommended Kubernetes labels to the deployment and service manifest and these labels were missing in, in those files. All right. Um, yeah, this was it from, from my end. Uh, then we can jump over um, to the roadmap, but it's still CAP 06 that is driving the roadmap. And as we discussed last time, this is all about the new shipyard format and the shipyard controller that um, was started by Florian this week. When you want to uh, get involved into the discussion and, and into building the new shipyard, please go to this uh, CAP enhancement proposal and leave a comment there. And um, we are happy to discuss your, your thoughts about the new way of, of the shipyard um, right at this place. Okay, then we jump over to the working items for this week. And let me just go there. Um, in the ready for review, we have this issue where um, Andreas and, and Ermin were working on. This is that Andreas now provided a way that you can customize a captain endpoint so that you can also add a prefix to the to the endpoint, and this was yeah done in 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 work with with Ermin, but I talk, talked with Andreas. He will show us this implementation next week. And then the second issue that we have here in there is from Gabriel. Gabriel is an intern, and he uh, also contributed to this to Captain, uh, especially to the Captain CLI because for his project, for his um, job, he needed to get uh, the events out of Captain, all events, and therefore he provided an extension for the CLI. And he is also going to show us this uh, contribution next week. All right, then in progress, there is still this placeholder task uh, that is about the flakiness of the integration tests. Uh, yeah, from time to time they fail because of the reason that the Travis CI cannot authenticate to G Cloud. And um, I left a comment there and let's have a look on how this behavior, um, if this behavior remains or um, can be solved. And also Gabriel, provided some improvements in regard to the uh, integration tests and they are also linked to this issue. Then, uh, Ermin, are you, you are working on the wrong version in the environment overview? Yeah, I just started with that one. Um, the issue here is that the bridge shows the um, old version if the evaluation failed but in case that we have direct deployment, we don't do a rollback, uh, even if there is an evaluation failed. And uh, yeah, this case needs to be uh, considered here. Working right. on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Florian, you already said that you are working on the counterpart of the triggered event, which is the, the started and finished event handling. Yeah, so this is almost done, actually. Uh, I just want to write some uh, further unit tests to make sure everything's working as intended. Okay, then here we have, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, this issue from Gabriel, this one was really related to the integration tests, but this one is all about the captain get event command for the CLI. And then, um, Christian, how is it going with your um, task and issue related yeah. to Prometheus? So, um, yes, so we, you and I, we had a discussion, I had a discussion with Jürgen, and there is some bigger changes. Let me 
share my screen so I can show you perhaps what I mean with that. Um, share, start, share screen. One sec, um, screen, share. So you can see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it looks like that the default deployment method for, for Prometheus has been changed and um, we agreed on uh, trying to, to give the Prometheus operator a shot. And the Prometheus operator is now getting installed via, um, where is, um, oh, this was work item, uh, doesn't matter. It's now getting um, installed via Helm. So the, the, the official way is to install it uh, with a Helm chart provided by the community. And with this Helm chart, the Prometheus um, setup can be in any other uh, um, namespace installed, not only monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first uh, yeah, problem. It's not a real problem because uh, you can pass it over via an environment variable or so. Um, that's not the the big issue. The second thing is that the configuration has been changed from Prometheus. So when you're using an operator, there is not a config map anymore with a Prometheus YAML. They are storing the Prometheus YAML in, um, in a secret. And um, to add additional scrape configs, you have to create additional secrets for Prometheus. And as you can see here in the documentation, um, additional configurations, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's, it's you're, you're building a configuration, adding it as a secret, and then adding this to the custom resource definition. And this is still something I need to, yeah, to investigate or to figure out how to, to use it exactly. And then uh, rewriting the Prometheus service so he can utilize the uh, secrets instead of uh, the config map. Okay, okay. Uh, but see. the first uh, first part of the issue, what we had discussed here, um, to remove actually the Prometheus installation and the alert manager configuration and Prometheus configuration, this is um, implemented. So right now when you don't find a Prometheus installation, it will print out uh, Prometheus is not installed on the cluster. But uh, as I said, the big part will be um, the new configuration option for Prometheus. Uh, okay, okay, I see. Uh, thanks for doing the outreach to the Prometheus community. And is this is the operator now the way to go? Is this the? Yes, yes. Um, that's what they are saying in their Slack channel, at least. So, okay. if you want to to install Prometheus, official ways to use the operator and yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Uh, cool. Great. Uh, thanks for, for, for doing that. Okay. Then um, I'm continuing to share my screen. And I will go down to the last two items, which is one fr uh, from Andreas and one from my side. Uh, yeah, we still have DPRs open and not uh, closed yet. Uh, the reason is that we still need to uh, have a, another discussion round about the PRs before, go, uh, before closing them or before um, merging them into the master branch. All right, yeah. Then assigned and committed are two issues. One to a colleague from Google actually. He told us that he wants to work on that one, but no, uh, no further activity. I will ask him whether uh, he's still working on that or not. And also Imre assigned himself to this issue and so far there is no activity on that one. Okay, then um, yeah, let's go on to the backlog for the next week. The first one is that, um, as I spoiled a couple minutes ago, going forward, the distributor um, that I, which are used to to listen to events from Captain and then forwards this event to a Captain service will be enhanced, enhanced in a way that it also can pull 
um, events, meaning that the distributor in combination with the service can run outside of Captain and then just listens to the Captain endpoint and asks whether there is a new event for a certain task. All right, yeah, the, the issue is, is well formulated. Thanks to Andreas. Uh, here he writes down, and he has, has also a prototype for that. Uh, he prototyped this with uh, Thomas a couple of weeks ago, and then he, he, he lays out all the tasks that need to be done to get this distributor implemented. Who is up for doing this one? I will do it. Thank you very much, Florian. Then um, the next one, this is st um, still not finished because, I mean, Imre started to work on that and he provided a pull request that fixed one problem of this issue, but not the entire one. Uh, the reason is that um, Imre covered this problem in the, in the API component, but actually the API component itself is receiving a wrong error. And their error is coming from the MongoDB data store. And this means that for getting this issue done, we also need to tackle the MongoDB data store to return the, the proper error in case there is no event available. All right, yeah. Um, okay, here I have explained what's still missing. The problem is that in the MongoDB data store, there's the get, get last event function, and this function should return a 404 instead of a 500 error, and this is still an, an open issue. Who is who would want to take that one? I will take that. All right, and then I will assign you next to Imre, as he already did some work there. Thanks. Okay. Then here we have one that is related to the bridge. Um, yeah, thanks to Andy. Uh, he had a close look on the messages and labels that are now showing up in the new bridge. And he found a, a mistake there. It should be kept an send event new artifact. And he also wants to have some rebooting to make it more obvious to the user what, what the actual state um, is at this point. Um, Ermin, can I assign it to you? As I you will are, take that, of course. As you are our man of the bridge. Perfect. Then the next one, provide a better indication and workflow for artifacts waiting for approval. This is also in related to to be more user friendly um, what is this issue about first of all when there is an approval for deploying an event into a certain stage then andy uh, wants to see this visualized by uh, the the stage icon and i propose to to use a border uh, the blue one, the blue border around this stage icon, so that we have a, a visualization that there is a missing, uh, there's approval waiting. And I would recommend, or I would say that we use the same color as we use in the environment screen, so that we have um, have this uh, aligned. Yeah. And next to the border, um, then Andy recommends or proposes to also add the, the approval accept and decline button also in the event stream. This could be option one. Option two is to link to the environment screen. And let's 
use this meeting uh, and let's maybe have a discussion. Should we add this button to the event stream or would it be okay for us, um, for you as captain user to link to the environment screen? What's your thought about that? You can also indicate in the Q&A section or in the chat if you want. Um, I won't say my opinion yet. <laughs> We're waiting for uh, if, if someone wants to, to add his or her uh, opinion. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe I start. Uh, I think it would not be a, uh, I, I cannot see any drawback when we add it to the event stream. Uh, it will just like reduce uh, an additional click. So it would be easier, I guess, for the user if he has both, both options. If he's already in the environment screen, he has the options there. But if he is taking, if, uh, if they are taking a look at the uh, event stream, it would be cool if you can do it directly there. Yeah, we agree actually. Um, I also suggested to put it into the event stream directly without having that link and uh, then jumping to another view. Uh, because as Andy states here, uh, he's using the event stream a lot more than the environment screen. And uh, I think he wants to stay in this event stream uh, view because he wants to see uh, what's happening next. So it would be best to have just a button to approve it there from this event stream. There's just one uh, risk that I want to point out. Uh, because um, the benefit you get by approving an, a deployment in the environment screen is that you can take a look into the next stage. The environment screen tells you in this stage is running version X. And with the approval, you say, I want to override the deployed version with the version that is currently coming or that is ready to be deployed. And this information you won't get in, this, in the environment, uh, in the event stream, because the event stream is not telling you, be careful in the production environment, for example, you have um, version X deployed. And then it's kind of a, um, a got or then you True, have to... but since you're overriding it anyways, uh, it's more important to know the version that is going to be deployed than the currently deployed version. And the currently deployed one. But yeah. we could try to indicate that somehow in this um, approval triggered event. Yeah, at least we could show there the, the image that will, would be deployed when you approve it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that you can see, uh, or you, you see immediately uh, next to the approval, as you have it also in the in the uh, environment screen. There you see the version, and uh, yeah, the evaluation result, and then to approve or decline. Right there. And do you mean that we also should show the user uh, the version that he's going to override or replace? I don't know if it's uh, useful information, we can display it, of course, because we have the information, obviously, since we are showing it in environment screen as well. Mm. And should it be kind of a confirmation dialogue so that you cannot do it accidentally? That like there is a approve button and a decline button, but when you click the approve button, then it says maybe, do you want to deploy version X and replace version oh, Y? Yeah. That would be a good place to add the information, yeah. But this, uh, which version you're overriding now. Mm -hmm. But this then uh, requires an additional click. That's true. Yeah, no, yeah I was just uh, saying that mm -hmm. for this additional click, if it's like, like a very, very crucial operation to, um, yeah. to approve something into production, then maybe an additional click is good. It's like uh, you cannot do it by accident. Um, but maybe it should already indicate which version you are overriding so that you don't have to go into this confirmation dialog to see the new information. But it's just, if it's a crucial operation, I would suggest do it with a confirmation dialog. But if it's not a crucial operation, then just uh, go with, uh, display the information the user needs to know 
uh, in the event stream and then the user can just click uh, yes, yes or no. Yeah, and mm -hmm. since it's manual approval, it is crucial. So uh, yeah, uh, just in case that you don't approve by mistake, we could add a um, dialog there. I'm also for an, for an extra confirmation dialog if you want to overwrite the next stage. This. Yep. Yep, but it's, 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 a, it's a valid point, of course. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, okay. yeah, let's think about that and um, I will comment on, on this issue. All right. Um, but you can assign it to me, I will take you there. Okay. All right. Then we have an additional one that is also related to the bridge. Just let's go to discuss it or to, to explain it. Um, the, the issue is when we have a remediation workflow and there, the remediation workflow can successfully close a problem, then we will get a notification from the monitoring solution that the problem is closed. And this is right now indicated by a, a green icon and also by a green uh, border. But uh, for the end user, it's, mis it, um, it's misleading that still the entire remediation is, is red here in the in the uh, root event at the root event and the proposal is that whenever a problem resolved event is received this problem resolved event turns this color from red into green so that also someone can see oh uh, here a remediation was was running and um, it's now resolved and now uh, green but the interesting thing here is um, why is this problem resolved not connected to a problem open event? Shouldn't it be by providing the correct captain context um, with a problem open event and uh, then the problem open event would be the, the root event and the problem open event as the root event is always red. That is true. That is right now a little bit misleading because um, Captain received just a problem resolved and not the corresponding uh, problem open event. That is true. And it should actually be part of the entire event stream, the problem resolved. That's the one thing. And the other thing is uh, when we have a problem event, so when we have the problem open, and then after some time we get a problem resolved. Uh, should we mark the root event after that green again or should it stay red just for the indication that there was a problem? I don't know. I think we need to, we need, uh, to discuss this in more details because that, that was a good point. Um, the root event will always be a problem open. But should it turn into green when a problem resolved is, is coming in? Or yeah, has been resolved? That's the question. That's the question. Um, I don't want to assign it yet to someone. Yeah, maybe let's discuss that. Let's discuss that yeah, on the issue actually. On the issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then uh, the next one is that Andreas wants to do a little bit of research in regard to use Argo and Argo rollouts for the continuous delivery uh, part of Captain. This is somehow related to, to specifying the events. This is one reason why he 
don't want to close that one and has still an open PR um, yeah, because he wants to understand this part a little bit better before closing um, the cloud events. All right, yeah, then an outreach to the community. There is always a good first issue in the backlog for someone who wants to get started, for someone who wants to do his first contribution for captain. Uh, in this case, it's a CLI improvement that says improve the error message when no connection to the API could be made. And when someone wants to get started, um, please feel free to comment on this um, on this issue and then um, we will assign it to you so that you can start working. All right. Yeah, this was it from, from my side. Um, yeah, we went through the backlog. We discussed the task for the next sprint. This means that I'm done. Uh, Jürgen, do we have one more point on the agenda? Uh, no, basically, so I'm, I'm, I'm back, but uh, sorry, I dropped again. Um, so, no, if there are any questions from the community, we still have a couple of minutes to address them. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's also fine that we are closing this uh, meeting a little bit earlier than, uh, than usual. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice day, at least here in the Central Europe. So, <laughs> um, to allow also the community to enjoy the weather. Uh, but if there are some questions, please indicate um, in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, I just uh, want to give maybe feedback on the Captain community. Uh, so if you're still running on Captain 0 0.6.2, uh, there is a great way to update uh, your Captain installation. And uh, we've heard already uh, from a lot of folks that upgraded the from 0 0.6 two to zero seven uh, and uh, take a look in the captain docs. Uh, there is an upgrader and it works uh, really flawlessly. So uh, we got already great feedback from the community. Thanks for everyone uh, who did the upgrade already. And if you have not done the upgrade yet, then uh, we just want to encourage you to start the upgrade. Okay, yeah, with this, uh, I think, uh, Johannes, do you have anything left? Otherwise, uh, no. uh, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, thanks everyone for joining and uh, see you all next week. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.